Hello, welcome. Welcome to developing admin-friendly components for App Builder. Um, if you attended our session yesterday, this is uh, more or less the same. Um, and we are the Lightning App Builder team. <laughs> so my name is Michael. I'm the product manager for the team. Hey, I'm Adeep Varadrajan. I'm the tech lead for App Builder. And I'm Brian McNamara. I'm the senior engineer on the team. And before we start, for looking statements. So we are going to share some, um, some roadmap items. We're actually going to show a feature that's under development right now, too. Um, so stick around. It's going to be pretty awesome. Of course, make sure that you make any and all those purchase decisions based on what's generally available today. So uh, the agenda, I'm going to go over some background about App Builder pages, page templates, and components. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about styling guidelines to help make sure that your component looks good and it's going to render well in the App Builder. We'll talk about design time configuration, which for the, um, in the admin terms, that means the, the properties that show up on the right-hand side of the App Builder, just making sure you have good property values and, and um, guidelines on how to best uh, present those to, to those admins. We'll do a sneak peek into an upcoming feature. We'll talk a little bit about the roadmap, and then we'll finish up with some Q&A. So with that, so why is, why is this session important, right? Admins, they use the App Builder in order to go through and customize Lightning Experience. And the, the App Builder tool itself, if you're not familiar with it, is what we call a WYSIWYG tool. It's a, it's a tool that admins go in. They don't have to know any code. They don't have to have a coding background. They don't even have to touch a line of code. And they can go through and do some really powerful customizations in Lightning. And they can go through. They can build their own home pages. They can build their own record pages or even app pages, too. It's just a bit of a blank canvas for them to go and just go crazy with components. Um, and they can even add components directly from the App Exchange as well. So the App Exchange is fully integrated in the App Builder. And admins can go out and they can go and shop for more. So a little bit of the background. Um, so start first with Lightning Pages. And, and if you're a developer and you've touched this code before, you might have also seen it um, termed Flexi Page. And the page itself is this area that's all below the navigation. So this page, this is the Lightning Page area. And within each one of these pages, each one of these pages contain a template. And the template defines sort of the core sort of UX flow uh, and the UX layout of the page itself. So they can come in uh, one, two, or three column variations, which is what we ship today. Um, and think about it, you know, have header, body, sidebar. These are the areas where admins are going to drag and drop the components and where end users are going to interact with them. And then finally, it's the components themselves. So the components get contained within the templates. They're contained in the um, template regions. And, Components can really be um, used for a variety of different use cases. They can be used to visualize data. They can be used to kick off processes. So um, components are fairly, fairly robust, and they can be used just in a variety of different ways. And the three core use cases that we support for, for Lightning today are uh, record pages. So this is the first one down at the end. So admins, they can go and they can customize standard and custom object detail pages. Uh, home pages, so they can go and customize a home page with Lightning components. They can even activate those pages by profile so they can target users and deliver specialized experiences for them. And then app pages. This is the one that I kind of mentioned earlier. This is a bit of a blank canvas. Admins can go off, just start with a blank template and add components and really build out for just any use case outside of the home and the, and the record page scenario. And the other thing to note is down here, we've actually added um, these interfaces here. And these are, these are what you add to your components in order to make them work with each one of these page types. So for Flexi page available for record page, Flexi page available for desktop for the home use case, and Flexi page available for all page types. So once you add these interfaces, they appear in the app builder, and admins can add them to these various page types. And with that, let's dig a little bit into the styling. So before we go into the guidelines, let's uh, quickly jump into a demo. Uh, so Brian and I worked on creating this Lightning component. Uh, it's a component that sort of surfaces event information, to, uh, displays a countdown, so like in, you can see, you know, Dreamforce is 128 days away. So we spent a bunch of time sort of getting the logic right, the styling right, we're happy with it, and now we think it's time to expose it for use in Lightning Pages and the App Builder. And if you remember what Michael said in the last slide, it's as easy as going and having your component implement an interface. So let's switch to the Dev Console and take a look at the component. So I've got it configured here, and I'm just going to go and get it to implement one of the interfaces. And save, and that should be all we need to do to sort of get it to show up in the App Builder, just implements and whatever interface that you need. 
Let's switch to the App Builder. And so right there, you can see in the list of co custom components, our component does not show up. This is because, well, it's not exposed, right? We just did that. Let's refresh the palette. Uh, it should show up sometimes. Helps if I save. Sorry about that. There, right there. So that's the component that we just created. And with like a single line change, we were, we were able to expose it in the app builder. And you, know, you should be able to drag it onto the page, and it should work right. So let's go give an event ID. So it shows up. But it's clearly broken. It's sort of busted out of the region. It's essentially breaking the layout of our page. Uh, let's go take a look at why that's happening. Uh, if we switch to the CSS, right there at the top, we've clearly got a bad rule. We are hard coding the width of the component, which means that it's not going to adapt to the size of the container. It's just going to say, regardless of how much space I've got, I want this to be 1,500 pixels. That is a bad practice, because your component could be dropped in any set of regions, some of which are narrow, some of which are large or sort of wider. You don't want a hard code width. So let's instead swap this out and say it needs to be 100% width, which means it takes up the size of the container. Let's hit Save and Refresh. And that's looking much better. Now, this component, because we said it needs to be 100% width, it's taking up the space given to it by the large region. If we move it on to the right, it sort of adapts to that because you know we've sort of designed it to sort of take up the space available to it. So this is one of the things you want to keep in mind. Uh, let's quickly jump to the slides and look at some of the other guidelines that we uh, recommend you follow. The first is a width. This is exactly what we saw. Uh, you know, make sure your component takes up 100% of the width available. That way, the layout doesn't break. Uh, absolutely, uh, you know, do not set absolute values because, like we saw, you know, it's not. It's either going to bust out of the region or take up too much, too little space, and cause components from below it to reflow up, breaking the layout regardless. The next important thing to keep in mind is the spacing. So, components come in from different sources. There's the components that Salesforce ships. You see those as the standard components. There are the components that you as developers build in your org. You know, those are the custom components. And the admins could also go into the app exchange and install more components. So you've got components coming in from different sources. And in order to make sure that there is a consistent look and feel to the page, we take care of adding spacing between the components. So we make sure that components don't stick to each other, and the page sort of feels consistent regardless of where the components come from. But that does mean that if you add spacing to your own components, like top or bottom margins, there's going to be too much white space. So it's another thing to look out for and avoid if possible. And the last that we have here, and it's probably the most important one, is do not use CSS properties that take the component or the element out of the document flow. This includes properties like uh, floats, position, ap uh, position absolutes, and such. What's going to happen is these components get removed from the flow, get positioned in a different place. They're, they're going to overlap other components and just break the layout of the page completely. So this is something we highly recommend you stay away from. All right, Brian. So now that we have a component that is inside of App Builder and it's styled so that it fits within the containers, Let's take a, lit, a little look at what we can do to make this a little more configurable for all our end users. So let's take a look at the Lightning Component Bundle. A bunch of you are aware of the many different resources that are available in the bundle. There's a component, the controller, the helper, the renderer, uh, the design, the SVG, style, and documentation. We're going to focus on just two of those for this presentation, the design and the SVG resource. So let's take a look at what the design does. The design resource contains information that is used during design time in builders such as the App Builder. It's a way that you can expose your attributes to the tools for people to be able to customize them in that experience. It's also useful for uh, providing additional restrictions on your components, such as object restrictions. So with that, uh, let's take a look at the following, the SVG. So the SVG is also used by these tools to provide a nice little icon for your component. It's a way to uh, have your component show out in the sea of the other options. So 
we have our component that is exposed. Let's uh, jump back to code and kind of customize this a bit further to have uh, these nice stylings. So as you can see, we have the default SVG as well as the name of the component over there. Uh, we can improve this to make it a bit more uh, clear what this component does and provide a nice icon to help it stand out. So we'll jump back to the developer console and we'll start off by giving this component a label. So we'll jump to this design resource that we we're talking about. And it's as easy as putting label equals in the root element. And this will give the uh, component a label of event countdown we'll see a bit later. While we're in the developer console, let's switch over to the SVG. So when we create an SVG, we're provided the default lightning SVG, which we can override with an SVG that we created. So we'll just go ahead and paste ours in, save it, and just like that, we can jump back and refresh, and we'll see those changes live in the app builder. Cool. So we now have a little countdown timer SVG, and it's an event countdown. Now it's clear that this component is going to be a countdown of an event. So with that, let's uh, draw everyone's attention over to the right panel over here. So we have this attribute, event ID, which is clearly a developer name of an attribute. Uh, let's make this a little more clear. And using what we were talking about, we'll go back to the design file and simply add a design attribute to this file. This design attribute links up the event ID attribute uh, in the component, gives it a label as well as a description. So we'll go ahead and save that and uh, see what this does in the app builder. Simply refresh. And we now see that our label, as well as a info bubble, is appearing on the attribute, making it a lot more easier for an admin to uh, understand what is going on. But I'm sure you're all saying, that's a, that's a hard-coded ID right there. That, uh, that's not really customizable. That's not very friendly. I mean, having to go out, find an ID, copy and paste it in here, that's not a fun experience. So let's show you what you can do to make this a little more configurable and user friendly. So we have what is called a data source. A data source either takes in a comma separated list, or in our case, we have an apex control data source. This, control, uh, this apex controller is simply going through our events and returning an ID as well as a subject. We're using the subject as a label, and the ID will be passed into the component. So we'll go into the design file and add this uh, data source to this attribute. And it's as simple as saying data source equals Apex followed by the uh, event data source Apex controller. What this will allow us to do is now that we um, click back on the component, we're given a drop down with the events in our organization. Now it's as easy as selecting one from the list and it will populate the component with the ID of that event. This uh, unlocks a huge potential of customization and uh, usability to the customer. So with that, let's jump back to the slides and go over what we just did. So the first thing that we did was we exposed our attribute to the design tool such as App Builder. This is where we were able to set the label as well as description. Other things that we could have done is set a default. And if we were using some sort of integer, we can also set client-side validation min and max values on that as well. The next thing that we did was we added a data source. In our case, we used an Apex-based data source. This data source populates the pick list in the App Builder, uh, providing it with label value pairs that can be used during uh, design time. Uh, and so one thing I want to kind of draw your attention to is while you're developing these components, definitely have, um, you know, uh, plan your uh, component to be future proof. What that means is whatever you're putting in the design file should be treated more or less like an API. If you think about it, if you deploy your component to customers and then later on you decide to add an attribute that can be configured, you have to imagine that there are going to be pages out there that have no value for that attribute. So your component should expect null values being passed in and will have to be uh, able to handle these. Also, you want to make sure that uh, if there are any restrictions on the component, if you ever lessen those restrictions, you're going to have potentially pages that those are on where this will no longer work. So definitely think about your component, what it's meant to be on, where it's supposed to be, or how it's supposed to be used before you kind of publish your component. Um, so definitely think about that in the long run. 
Great. And with that, we want to give you a, a quick peek into the future. So this is a, something we've been working on the, um, for the Winter 18 release. Really excited about it. Um, hope you're going to uh, understand why it's really valuable. Uh, and that's being able to build your own custom page template. So let's say the admin comes in. They have a set of requirements that are beyond the one, two, and three column uh, options that we present them today. Well, this will empower you as a developer to be able to build a template and build that, that experience that then they can then deliver to the end users. And you can do things like build, build a template with as many columns as you'd like. So if you need a four-column template for a particular use case, um, you can solve it with this. You can add your own styling. You could even add JavaScript to it. So for example, if you want a region to be able to open and close, uh, that's something that you would be able to do with this. So with that, let's dive into it. Let's show you what the code looks like and then what it also is going to look like in the builder and at runtime. All right. So before we sort of give you a quick demo of how this works, let's talk through you know, what it takes to actually author these custom page templates. The important part to remember here is this is all part of the Lightning platform, so we aren't going to get you to learn new technologies around this. All of this, like you know, building a template, is as easy as building a Lightning component. You create your own component, you define the layout of that, you define the areas where you want uh, other components to be dropped into, and you implement one of these interfaces, much like you would implement an interface uh, if you had to expose your component to be drop, drag dropped in the app builder. So, you know, we've got the three page type. So if you want a template that needs to be used in record pages, you implement Lightning Record Home template. Uh, and likewise, for app pages, we've got a separate template uh, or an interface. And for home pages, we've got a different interface. So once you're done implementing one of these interfaces based on your requirements, uh, when you actually get to the markup, you need to define each or declare each region as an attribute of that component. Now, the one thing that's different from other attributes that you declare is that you need to make sure that the type is aura component array. What this tells the system is that this attribute really is intended to be a collection of components, much like you know, what a region is supposed to be. Once that is done, you can uh, specify where in the markup or where in the layout the region needs to be placed. Uh, in this case, we've got a simple template with a single region called region 1, and it's just wrapped in a single div. So it's just going to be you know, a vertical stack of components. So this is in the markup in the component uh, resource. When you switch to the design resource, there's, again, a little more uh, declaration that needs to be done, much like you know, the regular components. So you need to define that it's a template. So that's done using the flexi page template tag. And then you need to go and define each of the regions on that template. So in this case, we've said, you know, I've got a region. The name is region 1. That tells the system, fine, you know what? Uh, when it's used in the app builder, you need to uh, make that a drop target. And this other attribute that's specified is really uh, a way for you to tell the system uh, an approximation of how large this region is. And this is what is going to get passed into some of the other components, uh, which will, uh, based on this value, sort of adapt to that. So the possible values are small, medium, large, and extra large. So uh, there's, it's just an approximate value, so components don't end up breaking. And yeah, so. That's all it takes to write a template. So let's do a quick demo of this. Uh, let's switch to the dev console. We already have a template built out over here. So you can see at the top, it implements a uh, flexi page record home template. There's a slight difference. Like when we release it, it'll actually be a part of the Lightning namespace. So you know, once we implement that interface, we know that it's going to be available for use uh, in Lightning pages. The next that we've done is created three regions. We've got the header, main, and the collapsible regions. And each of these we know is a region because it is of type aura component array. And with that done, we just use those regions down here in the markup. And you can see you know, we've got these three regions sort of placed at different parts. And you know, we've got some logic that defines how they get laid out. We've got some CSS and a controller to define this behavior. What, we, what we've tried to do with this template is create uh, a layout with a header, uh, a 2 thirds column, and a collapsible 1 third column. So you can see there's associated CSS and controller logic for that. So let's quickly switch back into the app builder and show how this is surfaced over there. So this is the new page wizard. So you let's go and select record page, because that's what we built a template for. Uh, we give it a name, select any entity. And so if you look at the template picker, we, 
right here is a list of all the standard templates that we ship. I think the current count is about eight different uh, templates that we ship. And right be below that list, you're going to see the custom ones that you built out in your org. So in this case, we called it the header in two columns uh, template. And you know, that's it. Like, you just implemented that interface, and it shows up. Let's go and use that. And the app builder has sort of, because of all the metadata, all the uh, information that you declared in the design file, knows how to interpret this region. So it's no, it knows that there are three regions, and it needs to position drop targets there. And you don't need to do anything special to be able to drop components in there. So it's as easy as that. And so, so this is how the design time works. We've created a sample page and, put, uh, and sort of activated that. So let's switch to runtime to lightning experience. So here's the template that's in play, right? We've got the header region. We've got the 2 thirds column. We've got a 1 third column. And this one's collapsible. So we click that. We can sort of switch those around. Yeah, that's it. Very cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of the upcoming features for it. So beyond the Windsor 18 release, we really want to make that property editing experience um, better for admins. So uh, by doing that, we need to expose more features for developers to add to the components. So uh, the areas that we're looking at are supporting more data types, um, also being able to expose informational components. So for example, if you go into the App Builder today and you go to a record page, you can click the Highlights panel, and then there's a button in the property editor that says, see how it works. And that pops up a modal, and it gives the admin a little bit more description of exactly how to use this component. So that's something we haven't exposed yet in the, um, in the app builder for, um, for custom components, but this is something we're working on. And you can see, you get more information there. It helps coach them on how to use that component. And then the last two items are um, around dependencies. So, so dependent pick list attributes and also dependent attribute visibility, too, or other features we're looking at for, um, for properties. So with that, any questions? OK, yep, there's one back here. I'm in a little trouble hearing it. We, we've got a mic. There, oh, yeah, oh, sorry, there's one up here. Is there any push that's going to happen uh, as far as pre-populating records with lookup fields? Because right now, you can't do that. You can't do it in actions or anything like that. OK. I don't know offhand, but it's something we can follow up with you on. OK. Yep. Any other questions? So if you don't get a chance to come and ask, we'll hang out for a few minutes. But thank you very much for spending some time with us today. Thanks.